In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This evening, I want to talk to our business men and women. Something that I had prepared to share with you this evening. You realize that we are running um, parallel together with a, mot a motivation or a mentorship program for our young people. But then I decided that uh, our business hour will have to say something about it. And I want to share with you today's gospel coming from the book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 48 to 59. They asked Jesus, Were you not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon in you? I have no demon, Jesus answered. I honor my father, but you dishonor me. I am not seeking honor for myself, but there is one who is seeking it and who judges in my favor. I am telling you the truth. Whoever obeys my teaching will never die. They said to him, Now we are certain that you have a demon. Abraham died, and the prophets died. Yet you see that whoever obeys your teaching we will never die. Our father Abraham died. You do not claim to be greater than Abraham, do you? And the prophets also died. Who do you think you are? Jesus answered, If I were to honor myself, that honor would be worth nothing. The one who honors me is my father, the very one who say is your God. You have never known him, but I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do but I do know him, and I obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he was to see the time of my coming. He saw it and was glad. They said to him, You are not even fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? I am telling you the truth. Jesus replied, Before Abraham was born, I am. Then they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and left the temple. The Gospel of our Lord. Dear good people, what we read about today is the identity of Jesus. He says that those who know the Father, we have no problem knowing him. His disciples, well, claim to know the Father. And of course, they, they are using the earthly wisdom or logic which is not necessarily the truth of God. They are doing their normal historical calculation and they are asking Abraham lived then. In fact, historically Abraham lived in the year 1800 BC. And the prophets they too lived between the year 900 and 
562 BC. And the setting of this is about 32 AD. And so they are asking, how comes that um, you are not even 50 and you say that you have met Abraham? You are not even 50 and you say that uh, you have known this or the other one or the other one. Jesus is talking about knowing him, the identity. We can take the whole night discussing the Pharisees and how they missed to know Jesus. That we can. Maybe it could be the easiest that we can do. But this gospel passage, dear good people, is about us. And I want to share with you, especially those, those of you who are in business, about the identity we have of Jesus as men and women in business. What can we do to make sure that our identity of Jesus in us does not die. I know I have said in the past that, that uh, it's one thing to go to church while it is a completely different thing to be in Christ. We can be churchgoers who are not in Christ. Dear men and women in business, one thing that will keep your brand your brand shining is if you are able to inculcate in your business ethics the identity of Jesus. The way you run your business, of course it is not yours, the way you run God's business, God's way, reminds you that uh, you cannot run God's business, God's way, and at the same time, you have a problem with identity. So, what can we do to make sure that the identity does not die? Number one, we must take care of our personal devotions. Make sure that our personal devotion does not die. What do I mean by personal devotion? There is one thing we call the corporate worship, maybe the one you do at your business. Then there is the family worship. And of course, now there is the personal prayer life. That is what I, I'm, I'm calling personal devotion. That moment you have as an individual to keep you in check and to keep you in sync with the word of God. It could be that before the day ends, you will read the word of God. It could be you've got another devotion, maybe blessed sacrament, maybe the Holy, uh, the Holy Rosary, maybe depending. But there is something that you do alone. It is you and that devotion. That is what that gives you the strength to participate in the family event please make sure that that does not die because as long as as it is still awake you will never lose your identity of christ in you the second thing that you have to do is that your beliefs must remain stable it is not right and i'm sure we have mentioned this Today, we are doing things God's way. Tomorrow, there is a certain prophet. The other day, there is a certain overseer. The other day, there is some, something else. The other day, someone else. And in everywhere we go, we are given some talism. Some conco co concoctions of protection, you know. Our beliefs are shifting. Today I am with this prophet. Tomorrow I am with that. The other day I am with that. The other day I am with that other person. No. 
we must make sure that our beliefs keep constant. Number three, we must never allow the passion for Christ to die. Our passion for Christ to die. What happens when my passion for Christ dies? When my passion for Christ dies, the first thing that suffers is my liturgical observance. We start trivializing worship. We start trivializing any liturgical encounter. We do things our way. We do things our design. The sense of sacred dies in us. Sometimes you'll find us in church, seated the way we want. Other people in church making noise. Other people in church dressed as if they are on holiday. Others seated as if they are in a political array. Others chewing some gums. Others mention them. We come to church late and leave early before everything is done. The sense of sacred is dead. There's nothing as bad as one whose passion for Christ is dead in their lives. The other day, the other thing eh, is to refuse, to refuse to deny on the validation of the world. To refuse to deny on the validation of the world. There is that natural, uh, the, I would call it maybe the, um, the natural inclination of wanting to be validated. The world is not known for that. Unfortunately, we want the world to validate us. We want um, people to say we are doing this or the other one or the other one. We are missing it. Dear good people, that is not what we are called to do. We must refuse to allow ourselves to be validated by the world because Christ has the final say. We must stop speaking negatively of ourselves. And I have always said, if he has not uh, written us off, why should we write ourselves off? Why? Him, he has not written us off. So too, we can't. We cannot write ourselves off because he is on our side. It is not possible to run away from that. We all have our own weaknesses and our shortcomings. That is not an excuse to keep on demonizing yourself, judging yourself, condemning yourself, hating yourself. Mention all those other things. We must kill that because the danger of telling negative things to ourselves is that tomorrow it will be natural for us to speak evil about others. And finally, when we do not have this, uh, we must always allow ourselves to have the sense of peace. The sense of peace. What does that mean? Having the sense of peace is allowing ourselves to see the world the way God does. To see people the way Christ does. Remember, we can be at peace and our brothers and sisters are crying, are, they are in pain, they are in agony. I remember somebody wrote to me that, Father, I want to beat up this person so that my heart can be at peace. Uh -huh. Father, I want to revenge for my heart to be at peace. Now here then we are told there is a, a clear-cut difference between having the sense of peace and being at peace. I can be at peace, but my brother is crying. I can be at peace, but my wife, my husband is in pain. Because I said, I will revenge for me to be at peace. 
The sense of peace tells us that we must be conveyors of God's peace. The good I wish for myself must be the good I wish for my brother. If I want my heart to be at peace, I must work very hard for my brother, for my sister to be at peace. I will not say like a fellow who told me that, Father, I want to beat this man so that my heart can be at peace. Or, Father, I want to revenge here so that my heart can be at peace. It does not go that way. What we must do is to make sure that if I am at peace, my other brother is at peace. That helps us even to celebrate the milestones of our brothers and sisters. And we will never sabotage anyone's business. Why? Because today it could be my day. Tomorrow it is yours. You come, we celebrate my business breakthrough today. Tomorrow we celebrate you. Because as we celebrate myself, we also claim your success for tomorrow. We claim your breakthrough for tomorrow. That's how it works. Men and the women who have a sense of peace work day and night so hard to make sure that everybody else is celebrating, is happy, at peace and content. Dear men and the women in business, we can be happy in this world, but only if we want to be happy. We can be unhappy if we want to be unhappy. It is the will of God that we must be happy all the time. And one way of making sure that we are happy, even as we do business, is to make sure that the identity of Christ is never dead in our systems. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you for the gift of our men and women in business. Father, I thank you for their life. I thank you for what they have been going through. And Father, I thank you in a very special way for the identity of your son that is always in us, dear Father. I pray for your sons and daughters in business that, Father, guided by you, they'll always keep this identity not only in themselves but also in their businesses. Father, I pray that your sons and daughters in business we will celebrate one another. That, Father, we may be a people who are happy when our brothers and sisters are celebrating milestones. That we may be concerned when our brothers and sisters are in pain and loss. Help us, dear Father, to live like, a, like one community of faith where, guided by your word, we can always make sure that we live as you do want us to live. Help us, dear Father, in our businesses, in our day-to-day -day life, in all that we do, that we may always be seen doing what you have called us to do, not only tonight, but all the days of our life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, good people. Before I tell you good night, I want to thank you, those of you who have released your sons and daughters to participate in the mentorship program that is ending on Sunday. I want to say thank you to you. God bless you. And those of you who have been following us on the mentorship program, we started on Sunday the 3rd and we are finishing on Thursday the 10th. We thank you for that. I want also to thank you for your sons and daughters.